get on losers, we're gonna overthrow the government. Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing well. So whilst I've been co-hosting our little read-along of Les Miserables, the question has popped up quite a few times on the Discord server about which version of Les Mis is the best one, or alternatively, which one should be the first foray for people into Les Mis the musical. It's a very legitimate question because there are lots of different versions of Les Mis, multiple cast recordings, like three different concerts, there's one movie, like there's a lot. Each of them have their fans, each of them have their opponents, and they all have their perks and pitfalls. And of course, as you might expect, I have strong opinions on this. The thing about Les Mis is that as much as I love it, I don't think I've ever found a perfect cast, you know, where I thought that every actor, every single song was just 10 out of 10, as close to my favourite version as humanly possible. It's just such a big story and there are so many different characters and songs. And you know, after 36 years of being in the West End, you know, everybody has their own opinions on how Les Mis should be done, that it would be just impossible to accomplish a completely perfect version. But you know, we live and dream. However, I did want to take the time today to give you a little bit of a rundown of my thoughts and opinions on which Les Mis is my favourite and where you should go. So in this video today I am going to take you through what I consider to be the main versions of Les Mis, and I will point out that this is going to be the main English language versions of Les Mis, the main ones that you would probably encounter if you were just googling Les Mis or if you went on Spotify. As far as I can tell there are seven main English language versions of Les Mis, firstly the original London cast from 1985, the complete symphonic recording from 1988, the 10th anniversary concert at the Royal Albert Hall which was in 1995, the live show recording from 2010, the 25th anniversary concert at the O2 Arena which was also in 2010, the musical film directed by Tom Hooper from 2012, and then finally the 2019 concert at the Gilgit Theatre. And considering that Les Mis has more than 40 songs in it and I'm going through seven different versions, that's a lot, that's a lot. But I love Les Mis and I take this question very, very seriously. I wanted to make sure that I gave this question the time and consideration that it needed and so I did what any normal well-adjusted person would do. I listened to all seven recordings, each song from each album back to back, and recorded all of my thoughts on each song in a spreadsheet which I colour coordinated in terms of best to worst. Yeah totally normal behaviour. I'm not joking, I take this seriously, I made a spreadsheet which actually was really really helpful. <laughs> anyway, let's get into these main seven versions. I'm just going to go in chronological order and start off with the original West End cast from 1985. This original West End cast starred Colm Wilkinson as Jean Valjean, Roger Allen as Javert, Broadway legend Patti Lapone as Fontaine, Alan Armstrong as Thenardier, Francis Ruffel as Eponine, Michael Ball as Marius, Rebecca Kane as Cosette, and David Burt as Enjolras. So here we are, this is where it all began. And I'm not going to lie to you, I don't love this version. <laughs> what you'll notice straight away from this version is that it sounds incredibly 80s. For some of the songs it just has this weird kind of like sci-fi alien-y kind of vibe that I very much associate with the 1980s and it's so weird. <laughs> Another thing that you'll pick up on if you are already a fan of Les Mis is that the songs in this are noticeably so slow. Like seriously if you compare the latest concert at the Gilgood to this it, it it's just out of this world slow. Which for me as somebody who did not grow up on this album just was so distracting. It really kind of dimmed the momentum of each of the songs. Another thing you'll notice if you are already a fan of the musical is that there are some changes in this original version. Certain songs will have different lyrics or different rhythms that you will not be used to if, especially if you started off on the 10th anniversary. If you're comparing them back to back it definitely feels like they'd kind of workshopped it a lot so that by the time they got to the 10th anniversary we had now the definitive version of Les Mis. I think what will stand out a lot to people is the introduction. If you know Les Mis you're very used to the big bombastic dun 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 da da and that is not in this recording and when I heard it for the first time I was like what is this? This is not Les Mis. And also Stars, which is one of my favourite songs in Les Mis, is completely different. I think maybe the first verse or so is what you know, and then the second verse to the end is completely different. And I was like, this is not Stars, no! However, the original West End recording also includes some cut songs that you might not already know. This is the only recording of Les Mis to have Cosette's song, I Saw Him Once, which was cut in subsequent versions. And I believe it's the only one to have a full version of Little People, which is one of Gavroche's songs. Two songs that I'm not particularly attached to as a Les Mis fan, but it was really nice to get to hear them. I think because this was going to be the first version of Les Mis that people got to hear, that they got to buy, there was definitely a choice to kind of cut things for brevity, to kind of just give a best hits version of Les Mis. So there are quite a 
few songs that are cut and you will find cuts in almost all of these recordings. The other main issue that I have with this version of Les Mis is that I feel like emotionally it's the most flat. Almost every cast member is just kind of singing their part, they're not really emoting much. Sorry, my earrings are just going everywhere. And I think because it is a recording that kind of contributes partially to the flat emotions, it's very much just like these are the songs rather than trying to be performances. And in terms of standout performances and songs, I will say my favourite person in this cast is Michael Ball as Marius. And even though she's not my favourite Fantine, I have to give a shout out to Patti Lapone. I mean, you don't have Patti Lapone on an album and not shout her out. And yeah, I especially love Michael Ball's Empty Chairs, Empty Tables. It was really nice to get to hear him like in his first go at Marius. And he is going to be a recurring feature in this video. <laughs> Next up, we have the complete symphonic recording from 1988. This one starred Gary Morris as Jean Valjean, Philip Quast as Javert, Deborah Byrne as Fantine, Guy Sofa and Barry James as Madame and Monsieur Thenardier, Anthony Warlow as Enjolras, Michael Ball again as Marius, Caho Simada as Eponine, and Tracy Shane as Cosette. This I believe was known as the international version of Les Mis, I believe because it included both the Broadway and Australian cast. And this recording is particularly notable as it is the only version of Les Mis to include the entire full show. Even all the tiny little recitative bits of Les Mis that are usually not included in concerts is included in this version. And it's especially noticeable since there have been a lot of revisions and cuts in the full show over the years. It's a pretty good one to go back to if you are ever in a cast of Les Mis and you're wanting to learn a part. However, I'm gonna level with you, I am not a massive massive fan of this version. And the main reason for it is that I do not like the Valjean in this. And considering he is the main character and is in most of the songs, it really dampened my enjoyment. And it's funny because from looking online, I feel like, especially with older fans of Les Mis, he is quite a fan favourite, but I couldn't stand him. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong if you've listened to this and you're not hearing what I'm hearing, but I feel like he's trying to do Valjean with a French accent. And at first I was listening to it thinking, oh, well, it is an international version. Maybe this actor just does have a French accent. But no, he is American. He is from Texas. Like he's putting this on. And it does kind of sound like Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast trying to play Jean Valjean and it is so distracting. And I think it would be less distracting if the rest of the cast were matching this accent but because it's just him alone I'm like what are you doing? What are you doing? And yeah to be honest I would say that the majority of the cast are not my favourite. Not always that I dislike them they're just not my favourite choices. However I will give some standout performance mentions. Once again we've got Michael Ball as Marius and this is the first time that we are hearing Philip Quas playing Javert and of course they are both fantastic. I would say especially if you were a fan of Michael Ball and Philip Quest in the 10th anniversary, this is a really good recording to check out. It's a really good chance to hear Michael Ball and Philip Quest singing the bits of Les Mis that they didn't get to do in the 10th anniversary, so that definitely is a perk of this recording. I would say that this version of Empty Chairs at Empty Tables is probably Michael Ball's most emotional, and I also absolutely loved Beggars at the Feast, because it includes a cut verse where Marius tells off Thenardier for his treatment of Eponine, which I'm pretty sure is not in recent versions, but I really really like here. Other songs that I loved from this were Back at the Barricade and Javert's Soliloquy. I would definitely say that this recording gets better towards the end for me. So yeah, there are definitely redeeming features of this, but like I say, I, I feel like Valjean is such a massive part of Les Mis that if he's not really compelling and I don't like him, then the cast is gonna suffer for it. Next up, we have a lot of people's firm favourite, which is the 10th anniversary concert at the Royal Albert Hall from 1995. This was actually the first version of Les Mis that I personally ever saw. And this one stars Colm Wilkinson, again as Jean Valjean, Philip Quast, again as Javert, Ruthie Henshaw as Fontaine, Jenny Galloway and Ellen Armstrong as the Thenardiers, Leia Salonga as Eponine, for the final time, Michael Ball as Marius, again, Judy Kuhn as Cosette and Michael Maguire as Enjolras. As you can probably imagine, because this was the first version of Les Mis that I ever saw, I have such a soft spot for it. And yeah, it is so, so good. This one is also known as the dream casting concert. The idea behind this cast being that it was going to comprise the best of the best of each of these characters from all of the different versions of the show. Though, you know, mainly it's West End Broadway in Australia. And I would definitely say the reason that I like this cast so much is that it's the most consistent cast. It does the rare feat for me in that I don't dislike any of the cast members in this and I don't dislike any of the songs in this. <laughs> that sounds so bitchy to say but I, I, I've, I've explained already. Everybody in this cast does their job well. However, what I will say for this is that not everybody in this cast are a love for me. Definitely like but not always love. One thing that you might find jarring if you're watching this for the first time is that because it's a concert setting there are no props, there's no blocking, it is literally just the cast members standing at a microphone and singing out. Another thing to note is that this is very much a best bits concert so there are some very big cuts to this music. However, saying that this is also 
also the last recording with some of the deleted sections of certain songs that you will notice as you go further on in Les Mis recordings. Yeah, in the past 20 years or so, there have been some quite big cuts to Les Mis to try and make it slightly shorter and slightly more palatable for an audience, which yes, once again, I do have opinions on the cuts that they have made. <laughs> Something I wanted to add from my notes is that there is a really funny moment right at the beginning of this version. <laughs> so in the very, very first song of Les Mis, in the prologue, the first singing that you hear is a group of men, a group of prisoners singing, ah, 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 and then eventually that transforms into them singing, look down, look down, don't look them in the eye. However, at the beginning of this song, one of the ensemble members forgets his cue and he forgets to change from R ah to look down. So it ends up being, ah down, look down. And I just found it really funny that somebody clearly missed their cue right at the beginning of the show. There's also a really adorable moment right at the end of the song Castle on a Cloud, in which the little girl who's playing corset is like, she's doing a great job, she's singing, but then a cannon can be heard. You just hear this massive bang and the girl playing corset is like just a complete pro. She just keeps on singing, even though she must have been terrified. <laughs> I wish I'd been so professional when I was that age. So yeah, this is a really, really good cast. I really like it. Like I've said, the only issue with this for me is that some of the performances are not my absolute favourites, but they are all very, very good. Standout performances for me would be Philip Quast as Javert. He is my favourite version of Javert. No one else will compare. That's a bit of a rhyme, isn't it? Also, Leia Salonga, my queen as Eponine. And in terms of songs, there are so many that I could mention in this version of Les Mis. So do not take this as an exhaustive list at all. But Philip Quast stars is absolutely... <sighs> It is a masterclass in that song. Any of the songs with Leia Salonga, frankly. But especially on my own and a little fall of rain. Javert's soliloquy, once again, empty chairs, empty tables with Michael Ball. And I will say this cast does my favourite version of One Day More. And I think that speaks to the fact that every single member of this cast is really, really good. There are no duds in this lineup. Next up, moving right along to Les Mis Live, the 2010 cast recording. This is a recording that was actually taken live from a touring production of Les Mis, which was celebrating the 25th anniversary. So this is the only version that is taken directly from the staged show and stars John Owen Jones as Valjean, Earl Carpenter as Javert, Madalena Alberto as Fantine, Ashley Artis and Lynn Wilmot as the Tenardiers, Gareth Gates as Marius, John Robbins as Angeras, Rosalind James as Eponine and Katie Hall as Cosette. So like I say this is the only CD recording of Les Mis which is actually taken from the stage show itself which means that you get to hear lots of aspects from the actual stage show that you wouldn't necessarily get to hear in a concert setting or in a studio recording. And what I mean by that is that you get to hear lots of interjections from characters on the stage. And I feel like this helps especially during the barricade sections. One particular example that really resonated with me when I was listening to this recording was Drink With Me, particularly Grantaire's second verse. So fans of the show will know Grantaire's solo in Drink With Me as being this really poignant moment in which Grantaire is kind of lamenting the fact that he is most likely going to die, that this rebellion is probably going to fail. And so is his and the rest of his friends' deaths going to mean nothing at all. And it's always devastating to hear it, but I feel like like it is even more powerful in this particular recording because during the course of him singing his solo, you hear in the background as the friends of the ABC try to stop him from singing, but he powers through anyway. He keeps on singing his truth. And I thought that was really powerful and something that you don't often get to hear in this song in other recordings. One thing that I will mention is that there are some weird cuts in this recording. For example, for whatever reason, the powers at B decided that they were going to cut half of the Runaway Cart song. It literally gets to the bit where John Owen Jones sings, say what you must, don't leave it there. And then it cuts to the next song, which makes no narrative sense and I don't know why they decided to put the cut there. In terms of where this falls for me, I would say this is a really mixed bag for me because the bits that I love in this and the characters, the actors that I love in this, I adore. They are some of my favourites. However, the bits that fall really flat for me and that I don't like so much really do fall flat and some of them I actively dislike. And for this particular version, it's not one where I want to pick apart different actors' portrayals because it really just is like a question of taste. It's not that they are doing a bad job, it's just that it's not my favourite. And a random thing to note is that the Tenardiers in this recording are played with Geordie accents instead of Cockney, which is not bad at all, it's just weird to listen to because I'm so used to hearing them with Cockney accents. Standout performances from this particular recording have to be John Owen Jones as Jean Valjean. Oh my goodness. Yeah, John Owen Jones is my favourite Jean Valjean ever. I just love him so much. I actually booked my tickets for the Gielgud concert back in 2019 based on the days where he was going to perform. Not because I have any issue with Alfie Bow at all, but because I love John Owen Jones so much. I think he is just brilliant at capturing every single emotion of Jean Valjean. And because he's played that part for so many years, you just know he knows what he's doing. So when I went to see him live for the first time, oh gosh, a year and a half ago now, 
oh. Um, I just felt like I could sit back and just watch this master at work. If you do ever get the chance to see John Owen Jones play Jean Valjean, I highly, highly recommend it because he is so good. So yeah, basically any of Valjean's solos are my favourite. So I especially love Valjean's soliloquy and Who Am I? But of course also Bring Him Home is fantastic. I also really like El Carpenter as Javert. He makes some different character choices to Philip Quas. He plays him as a much more vulnerable Javert rather than very authoritative. It's, it's not a bad version, it's just different. And I thought he did a really good job here. And I especially want to give a shout out to Katie Hall as Cosette. She is definitely my favourite Cosette that I've heard. She brings so much light and personality to Cosette, which sometimes can be lacking, at least in the musical theatre version. Other songs that I love include The Confrontation, In My Life, and A Heart Full of Love. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that because of the fact that you do get to hear these interjections and you get to see the entire show, um, towards the end of the rebellion is so, so powerful. So those songs in particular would be The Second Attack and The Final Battle. And a big spoiler here, but I think a big reason to why this is so much more powerful for me is that you get to see Gavroche's death, which is often not included in concert versions of Flame is because it requires so much of the set and the props and the movement so it's not a very good bit of the plot to include in a concert but is really really key for the emotions and the plot and I think when you listen to this particular recording of Flame is you get to see how much anger was sparked in the students by the killing of Gavroche and how that really fueled them into their final big push that final decision that even though it is hopeless even though they are going to die they are going to keep fighting so that Gavroche does not die in vain so yeah this one is a bit of a mixed bag for me but like I say, the bits that I love in this, I really, really love. Next up is the 25th anniversary, also from 2010, but which took place at the O2 Arena. This particular concert starred Alfie Beau as Valjean, Norm Lewis as Javert, Laius Longa back again, but this time playing Fontaine, Jenny Galloway reprising her role as Madame Thenardier, and now Matt Lucas as Monsieur Thenardier, Samantha Barks in her first stint as Eponine, Nick Jonas as Marius, Katie Hall once again playing Cosette, and Romine Karimlou as Angelas. I actually remember when it was announced that they were doing this version of Flame and I was so desperate to go but the tickets just seemed so expensive but there was a lot of buzz around this to be sure. This was the first concert performance that used a lot more blocking and more props and it also included a much fuller version of the score than the 10th anniversary. However that is not to say that it comes without cuts, there are definitely cuts to the material here. So a specific example to compare and contrast. In the 10th anniversary we go straight from Javert's solo stars right into red and black. In the 25th anniversary performance we go from stars into a little interlude with Gavroche and then we go into red and black. Whereas in the full stage show we have stars, we have Gavroche's interlude, but then we also have Eponine's errand, which is a little back and forth between Eponine and Marius. And then we go into red and black. So there have been cuts to the 25th anniversary, but there are little interludes like Gavroche. And yeah, I love this version. I love the fact that you do get to see more of the original show. I really love that a lot of the ensemble members in this cast are actually made up of previous Les Mis casts. So for example, Earl Carpenter plays the bishop right at the beginning. All of the factory women and the turning ladies are previous Cosettes, Fontines and Eponines. So just in the ensemble you get like Gina Beck and Lucy Jones and Madalena Alberto. So it feels like there's just so much love and so much respect for previous casts. This one was also really notable for me because it was the first time that I felt like I really appreciated Marius's friends, the friends of the ABC. I felt like I had more understanding of the rebellion that they were fighting, which of course is a massive set piece of Les Mis. I felt like when I watched the 10th anniversary I didn't really care so much about the rebellion because everyone's just kind of standing in a concert setting, you know, just standing and singing into a microphone rather than really, really acting out the parts. I just felt like these friends of the ABC had a lot more personality and a lot more intensity. And like I say, that might just be because it was a blocked performance rather than just being a concert, but it really did just bring to life this entire section of the show, which I hadn't really felt in the 10th anniversary. There are so many different cast members in this who are my favorite definitive version of that character. So many of the songs in this are my favorite version of the song. However, there is, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to this performance. And yeah, if you know this version, you'll, you'll probably know of whom I speak. Um, mm, mm, mm. um so Nick Jonas. Mm, um, he tried, he tried. We cannot say that he didn't try. <laughs> um, yeah, Nick Jonas is in this and he is, he, he mm, mm. He's not my favourite Marius. He just, he sticks out like a sore thumb in this cast. I don't know why they cast him. And I feel so bad for him because he's really young in this. I think he's about 17, 18 in this cast. And I, 
honestly, I think he probably, if he was asked to play this part again, I think he would play it really well now. I think his voice has probably strengthened a lot. But yeah, this is really not his musical material at all. And especially in so many songs, they stick him right next to Ramin Karimlo and <laughs> the contrast in voices is so apparent. However, I definitely judged this a lot harsher when I was younger because I had not yet seen the 2012 movie and had not been <laughs> delighted by Russell Crowe's performance. So actually watching it back now, I, I didn't dislike him quite as much as I did when I was younger. And I feel like in songs where there's just like little doses of him, I, I'm fine. But in big solos like Empty Chairs at Empty Tables, you can so tell that he's struggling with the part. And I don't want to dwell on it too much. I don't want to be mean to him at all. But I will just say, like, if, if you do watch this version, maybe like substitute in some of his songs with other people like Michael Ball or Rob Houchin's versions. And then that will be your perfect version. <laughs> Standout performances in this are of course my queen Leas Longa as Fontaine. Norm Lewis as Javert is so good. And once again, a massive shout out to Ramin Karimlu as Enjolras. And yes, if you're a musical theatre fan, Ramin Karimlu as in the Phantom of the Opera in the 25th anniversary. <laughs> He is just so good in this role. And like I say, the friends of the ABC just generally are fantastic. I love Hadley Fraser as Grantaire especially, and especially love the little moment between Grantaire and Enjolras after Drink With Me, where Grantaire looks at Enjolras and just grabs his head. Oh, that was a moment where a million ships were born. Also shout out to any Heathers fans, because one of the friends of the ABC is actually played by a young Jamie Moscato. Yeah, Jamie Moscato, who played JD in the West End run of Heathers. Look at him, look how cute. And once again, there are so many great songs in this version. At the end of the day, I dreamed a dream Master of the House. This is probably my favourite version of Master of the House. Red and Black. Do you hear the people saying drink with me? <sighs> yeah, I love this version. And then we have the movie. <laughs> Let's just get through it. The 2012 movie directed by Tom Hooper and starring Hugh Jackman as Jean Valjean. Russell Crowe as Javert. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. Anne Hathaway as Fontaine, Sasha Baron Cohen and Helen Bonham Carter as the Thenardiers, Eddie Redmayne as Marius, Amanda Seyfried as Cosette and Samantha Barks as Eponine and Aaron Tveit as Enjolras. I think what we're gonna have to establish here is that every single actor who plays Enjolras I'll probably have a bit of a crush on. Okay, you can probably tell that I don't love this version. Uh, so I'm going to give like the pros here because there are pros to this. One of the big advantages of film over stage is that you do get more context for location, space and time. And this works especially well in songs like One Day More, where you get to see what each of the characters are actually doing rather than them just standing in a line singing. It gave me a lot more context for the world of Les Mis than I'd had previously. I really like that they brought back original West End cast members and 25th anniversary cast members into the ensemble for this film. So for example, the Friends of the ABC are mainly played by people who you would have seen in the 25th anniversary concert. Colm Wilkinson, who was the original Jean Valjean, plays the bishop, which is so poignant when he gives the candlesticks to Hugh Jackman. It's kind of like he's passing the torch. I believe Francis Raphael, who was the original Eponine, also gets a little bit of a role as one of the lovely ladies. And these original West End cast members led to a hilarious moment when I was watching the premiere, the red carpet, back in 2012, because Michael Ball was hosting the red carpet and he had not been <laughs> brought back for the film. And he had so many moments during the premiere where he was kind of like half joking behind seriously being like, oh, oh, they cast you. They didn't cast me. And I was the original Marius. Why didn't they cast me? <laughs> Which I love. I would say the standout performances in this would be Eddie Redmayne as Marius and Samantha Box as Eponine. I love their performances of On My Own, Empty Chairs at Empty Tables and A Little Fall of Rain. I also really love the second attack. I love the moment where we see Korferak like struggling to try and get Gavroche before he gets killed. And the final battle is just so affecting, even though it's not sung. I know also a lot of people love Anne Hathaway's rendition of I Dreamed a Dream. And it was what got her her Oscar and I think that was well deserved. However, it's a fantastic acting performance, but I don't think it's the best sung performance and that's what I prize more. So those are all of the good things I have to say about this. <laughs> That's it, that's it, that's all you get. Okay, I'm not gonna dwell on this too long because there have been better analyses of this film and the singing in it, and I'm gonna link particularly a sideways video on this movie, but this really should not have been done live. So Tom Hooper made the choice that he was going to have all of the cast members sing live because it was going to make for a more realistic acting performance. And this led to interesting results. Also the choice to have so many A-list cast members really took a toll on the music because half of the cast are struggling and because it's all sung live a lot of these delicate intricate moments of music are just so unclear. He also opted to have a lot of the actors sing in this very like sing speaky kind of way to make it more realistic and pretty much any singing that he could cut he did cut. Any time where he could have the actors speak rather than sing he opted for which I 
I just don't like. I just felt like Tom Hooper was so uncomfortable with the idea of a musical and I'm like why direct a musical if you don't want to commit to it? It's just not the music of Les Mis. I think because a lot of the performances across the board are so similar it's kind of fine to watch but like I would never listen to the cast recording aside from this one time where I did have to listen to it for the video but aside from that never again. A lot of people have harped on on Russell Crowe and <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not, no, 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 no. Javert is my favourite character in Les Mis and if you mess up Javert, I feel like you've messed up the show. And it was just so heartbreaking after hearing Philip Quast and Norm Lewis sing stars and Javert's soliloquy so well to hear this version, which is just so monotonous. But I'm also not letting Hugh Jackman off the hook. Like, who decided that they were going to scream Bring Him Home, which is meant to be such a quiet, soft song? Yeah, there were some really bad choices in this film. Like, if you like this film, absolutely, that is fine. However, I would not recommend that this be the only version of Les Mis that you watch. I know a lot of people watched the film of Les Mis, decided they didn't like it, and then just kind of wrote off the entire musical. I would urge you to not do that. Do not make the movie the only version of Les Mis that you see, because it is just not the show. <sighs> and then finally we have the Gail Good concert from 2019, starring Alfie Beau once again as Jean Valjean, Michael Ball but this time as Javert, Carrie Hope Fletcher as Fontaine, Matt Lucas and Katie Seacombe as the Tenardiers, fan favourite Rob Houchin as Marius, Shan Akko as Eponine, Lily Kerhos as Cosette and Bradley Jaden as Enjolras. So once again this is a concert as opposed to the full stage show which was performed at the Gilgud Theatre whilst the Queen's Theatre, which is now the Sondheim Theatre, was being refurbished. One of the refurbishments being that they have now taken out the revolve which I have opinions on but I've not seen the show without it so I can't really pass judgment yet. It was a way to keep the spirit of Les Mis going even though the full show couldn't be put on. And what I would say for this particular version is that it is good, it is fine, there are some fantastic performances in this and I think if you are a Les Mis fan you should definitely watch it. However, I don't think that this should be your first venture into Les Mis. This is not one for your first time. There are some choices that the musical director did in terms of changing the rhythm that I really don't like. I think partially it's that I have a very set idea in my head of what Les Mis should sound like which is mainly from the 10th and the 25th anniversary concerts and whenever somebody deviates from that I'm like what are you doing? That's not right. They've also made a few lyric changes to match up with the movie for the people who are in the audience who are coming directly from the movie. Which I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I, am, I have mixed feelings on some of the lyric changes they made. Now in terms of individual performances, I have gone back and forth on my impression of Michael Ball as Javert. I don't know where the decision came to cast both Alfie Bow and Michael Ball came from. I don't know if they just really wanted to capitalise on Ball and Bow, for those people who don't know, Alfie Bow and Michael Ball kind of often perform as a duo, so maybe they wanted to capitalise on that or was it just that Michael Ball really wanted to do Les Mis again and they felt bad that he hadn't been in the movie so they cast him as Javert. One of the things about Michael Ball Javert that I'm not a massive fan of is that he extends every single note that he can to the point where in ensemble songs where he's meant to be batting off other people he will kind of over sing and out sing them or he will sing over that other person solo and I'm just like what are you doing Michael? And I don't know if that's just Michael Ball being like I'm Michael Ball I can do whatever I want. To me as a fan already it's quite funny to listen to but that's probably one of the reasons why I wouldn't suggest listening to it for the first time because you need to appreciate where those changes have come from. However what I will say for Michael Ball is that when he sticks to the rhythm rather than going off and doing his own thing and especially on songs where Javert is meant to be more intimidating or more skeptical I actually think he's quite good. He does stern very well which I didn't expect. Standout performances from this cast would be Matt Lucas as Tenardier. I feel like he's really come into his own as Tenardier and the beginning of Master of the House makes me laugh so much as well as Bradley J Jaden as Andras. Whenever he was on stage I could not take my eyes off him. Which maybe once again is because I have a crush on every guy who plays Andras. What off it? I feel like the thing with this particular recording is that there are a lot of performances in the Gilgood concert which are like my second favourite version. For example the Friends of the ABC are fantastic but I do slightly give the edge to the 25th anniversary. That being said Rob Houchin is a much better Marius than Nick Jonas so hmm. And I think standout songs would be I Dreamed a Dream, Lovely Ladies and Look Down. So those are my thoughts on all seven of the different recordings of Les Mis. And as I said, I did rank each of the songs because I have no life. And I gave them a gold, silver, bronze, and then a thanks, I hate it award. Gold got three points, silver got two points, bronze got one point, and then thanks, I hate it got minus one. So I will go in reverse order all the way up to my favourite version. So kind of predictably, right at the bottom with a score of minus seven is the 2012 movie, which was awarded zero gold medals, three silvers, two bronze, and 15. Thanks, I hate it. I'm just not a fan of this one. In sixth place, I was actually quite surprised by this one, with only two points, was the original West End cast from 1985. This one got one gold medal, zero silvers, 
two bronze but three thanks I hate it. And I think the issue with this one is that it didn't leave much of an impact on me. It often just didn't end up ranking. In fifth place with only seven points came the complete symphonic recording from 1988. This scored three gold medals, two silvers, five bronze and eleven thanks I hate it, which was largely due to the fact that I didn't like Valjean's songs. However, like I mentioned, there were some moments of this soundtrack that I absolutely loved, which was largely due to the fact that it was such a full version of Les Mis, and Michael Ball and Philip Quas were so good. <laughs> and then number three and number four were actually really, really close. In fourth place with 36 points was the concert at the Gilgud. This scored two gold medals, 10 silver, 10 bronze and zero thanks I hate it. So there were no songs in this that I actively disliked. However, like I say, a lot of the songs in this were often like my next favourite rather than my absolute favourite. And that's where it slightly let itself down. In third place, very close with 37 points, was the live recording from 2010. This scored 10 gold medals, probably most of them were John Owen Jones versions, five silver, one bronze and four thanks I hate it. Like I say, this was a bit of a mixed bag, but the bits that I loved in it, I absolutely adored. Which leaves number Number one and number two and once again these were so so close. In second place with 65 points, we've jumped up quite a lot, is the 10th anniversary concert at the Royal Albert Hall. And I have been told by Miranda from Pages and Stages that if I didn't put the 10th anniversary as my top place then she might unsubscribe from me, which I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This got 12 gold medals, 9 silver, 11 bronze and 0 thanks I hate it. Like I say, this was the most consistent cast, there were no songs in this that I did not like. However, taking the top spot for me with 71 points, 15 gold medals, 11 silver, 6 bronze and 2 thanks I hate it, which were all Nick Jonas songs, was the 25th anniversary at the O2 Arena. I don't know what to say, I just love Los Longa and Ramin Karim Lou and Norm Lewis. Oh so so much. To be honest the only weak link in this entire cast is Nick Jonas. Everybody else I just love so so much. I do tend to bat between the 25th and the 10th anniversary so often that there is a reason why it was so close. I'm sorry I can't deny my heart. The thing that does kind of break my heart is the fact that the 25th anniversary is not on Spotify and the DVD is not as readily available as the Gilga concert or the film. You can't buy it on YouTube which is so annoying but you should be able to buy a DVD if you find it. Like I say between the 10th anniversary and the 25th anniversary this is the fullest version in terms of the school and it does have more props and blocking and like I say my favourite friends, my favourite Fontaine, my favourite Cosette. I really like it. If you're a Lamest fan too, do let me know which is your favourite. Are you horrified that I didn't say the 10th anniversary is my favourite? I'm sorry it was so close! And if you haven't seen it before, are you now more tempted to or less? I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!